This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description. A practical prayer is a prayer that works. These discussions between Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence dive into the details of how it works and how to work it. Reverend Bill is a New Thought minister and the author of Practical Prayer for Real Results. Your new life begins with a new thought. Carol Lawrence is on a spiritual quest, finding the New Thought teaching after decades on the pulpit in three different traditional denominations. I've got some questions. Together, they're exploring the philosophy and activities that come together from many of the world's religions to create the practical spirituality that is New Thought. Welcome to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And I'm looking forward talk. to today's. Yeah, we got a conversation planned today, and uh, so you you take these topics that aren't particularly traditional religion, and but the traditional religion seems to have an opinion about, and then throw it into well, what about this in terms of new thought or practical prayer? So, and I love that because the answers are usually none of the above, or I don't know, but let's think about it. Well, what I'm finding also with choosing these subjects is that they are a part of traditional religion. They just don't explain it. Mm. You know, you, you can find a scripture that matches sometimes word for word, but it's one of those things that doesn't, if it doesn't fit into a certain interpretation, well, you don't, you don't know it because nobody's going to teach it. It's not going to be in a sermon. And um, yeah, I could, okay. I could tell you, you know about the, the lectionary, right? The, the common lectionary that uh, mostly main nine churches use and tells you, gives you the scripture and, and I won't go into all of that, but what is appropriate for the particular time of year. And uh, I noticed that routinely it's in three annual rotations and routinely certain things are not in it. And I would think like, well, what about this? And what about that? And there's nobody, <laughs> there's nobody interested in talking to me about what about this, but you know, even something like what we're going to talk about today, it's there. It's just nobody wants to talk about it because you, if you give it a fair uh, assessment, then it raises more questions and the, uh, whole kind of not the, the whole not industry what am i saying the whole organizational bylaws and constitution <laughs> falls apart right right then you have to well if that's not true then or if we if we get to consider that then shouldn't we consider this as well and if oh, that's yeah. possible maybe this could be possible and how about this one over here and that's oh yeah just no no end of uh no end of challenges and grief. So no, I was not but, fam familiar with a lectionary. It sounds like the sort of thing that you'd find in mainline church. So I'm, you know, the spiritual leader of an independent new thought spiritual community. So even the ones that are part of national or international organizations are not rock solid, organized, top down, hierarchical, whatever's. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of uh, my sister communities like to have the theme for the month. And one of the organizations says, this is what the theme for the month is going to be. And so everybody's going to talk on the theme for the month. And uh, when, when I have guest speakers, they say, well, what's your theme? <laughs> it's like, it's whatever you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with, if you tell me that this is what the talk is going to be about, and we promote that on all of our social media for two weeks, and you come and you say, I'm talking about something different. That's fine too. Well, you, and I got to switch over to you again, personally, that's just because you're an open person and you don't have a an agenda for how you want people to, like, you're not building a community around you and right. what you believe. Therefore, if you don't believe what I believe, then you're not accepted here. That's That's not you. So if somebody comes with a different subject, you're like, okay, cool. <laughs> Let's talk about that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. 
And, and we say every Sunday morning, we, we do our entire dogma on Sunday morning. And you can think <laughs> in other churches, God, that would take forever. But for us, it's either uh, one run-on sentence or two uh, reasonable sized sentences, which is we believe there's one power, love, intelligence, or force that creates everything, including each of us, and that we're each using that same power, love, intelligence, or force to create our lives according to our beliefs. That's the dogma. And you don't have to believe it. It's just that we've found that that's the way the universe works. So if someone's going to come in and disagree with that, then it's going to take a while before we can like just sit down and have a conversation about something else. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that should be one of our subjects because that is so powerful and so jam packed with um, freedom, you know, once you understand it and uncomplicates so many things. But um, again, it depends on what your agenda is. You know, and yeah. yeah, but that's, that's a whole nother thing. So I'm going to have to find myself a lectionary. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to look at it and I might, you know. I'll send you the link. <laughs> okay. I might make fun of it. <laughs> it, it has, it has its purpose. And when you look at things in terms of its particular purpose, you say, okay, but right. you know, it's not like you don't have to live by, you know, point A, B and C. I mean, you're allowed, if you choose something else, you shouldn't be hung out to dry. You know, I mean, my father told me something that I use really a lot. He says, and I was really young and rather, um, rather rebellious in ways. And, and he would say, Carol, don't break a rule until you find out what it's there for. It might be good. If it's not, if it doesn't work, if you think you have something better, fine, do it. But find out what it's there for. And I use that all the time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it helps you to be very, um, just to look at things critically, which is important. But so the lectionary is good for what it's good for. Yeah. Um, but I prefer, I prefer the way that uh, New Thought does things. It's good. And then here's some more. <laughs> here's some more good and more good. Right? Yep. Yep. And uh, to, to your point, you know, there's this, there's this law that when we're driving in our car and we come to a red light, we have to stop. And I know people who said, well, I don't, why do I have to stop? You know, why do I have to do that? It's like, that's not actually what it means. What it means is when you're driving down the road and there's not a red light, you don't have to worry about somebody coming in through an intersection on the side. They're going to be watching out for you. If there's a red light, then you're returning the favor. It's just, it's, it's self-serving. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see how nicely you explained that. You know, I mean, I'd say, listen. You go through the red light, you get a, get a ticket, or somebody's going to slam you in the side. That's what the red light's there for, okay? Don't yeah. go through the red light. But <laughs> returning good, the favor, that's much nicer like that. Yeah, it's, it's about an agreement, an, an agreement yeah. that we have doing right. that. And, right. um, and I became very good. I ran a teen group, uh, a New Thought teen group, and we didn't have hell, and we didn't have damnation. And mm -hmm. it was not easy to coerce them into doing things that they didn't want to do. <laughs> so I got very good at this sort of explanation. <laughs> like, I get no, it. This, okay. This just makes sense. But that's better, you know, because you can apply it to life in other places other than just, you know, the subject on the table. Yeah. Right? So we, you want to talk about karma? Yes. Yes. Um, so we've all heard what goes around comes around. Uh, the Bible talks about you reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. That's karma. But, <laughs> you, you know, it's, uh, it's worth spending a moment. So let's just say we use karma and people think about, okay, when I put out, it comes back. I've put some real raggedy stuff out there. Oh, my God, if that's coming back, is there any hope? I mean, now that I'm different and I wouldn't do that again, is there a way to avoid the uh, impact, the equal impact of karma? Can you stop it? Can you ease the, um, you know, slow down the pace of it? Everything has an equal and opposite, what is it? Equal and opposite. Equal and opposite reaction. Every action yes. has an equal and opposite reaction. 
Right. And so if that's applied to karma, some of the stuff that uh, me and others have put out there, we are really in trouble. So <laughs> the good stuff we don't mind, right? You can 10x that and let that come back. But what about the negative karma? So what do you say? Well, thank you for framing that in in terms of um, recovery uh, and scripture and uh, Newtonian physics. <laughs> <laughs> no possibility that we're not going to be able to identify what's going on. So karma, uh, you know, what goes around comes around, which is different than uh, you get back what you put out because the roundabout going can take a lot longer and it won't necessarily come back in the direction that you were pushing. So mm -hmm. if I'm being deceitful with my business partners, it's not necessarily going to show up as business partners being deceitful with me. It could be my, my kids stealing money from my bank account, or it could be my beloved having an affair with somebody else, or it could be any manner of things where that same consciousness of deceitfulness shows up in my life in, uh, in, a, in a way that I find to be troublesome. Not necessarily the same way that it happened. You know, you reap what you sow. If we are um, sowing seeds of anger and hatred and divisiveness, then anger and hatred and divisiveness show up in our lives. And by the way, if you're listening to this and it's starting to sound like the law of attraction, that's another way of describing it. <laughs> and the idea behind all of it is that, and I'm going to take it back to, to, to the principles, the new thought principle, that there is one. One power, love, intelligence, or force that creates everything. And, and it does so because it is that power, love, intelligence, or force. It is that divine energy that's either the Big Bang or the divine saying, let there be. That's the one that has been sharing or exploding or evolving or whatevering into all of these different forms over all of this time. So there's only the one. And it started out as pure energy. And then over time, it turned into matter and energy which can be interchanged, but never destroyed. So all of the energy that ever existed still does, even if it's in material form. And <clears throat> when we destroy matter, we basically just turn it back into energy. So that's all one. And we're part of it. We are part of that field. And so energetically, you know, there's low frequencies, audi audible, mm, and there's high frequencies. Ah, and that's just the audible band that I can sing. Other singers can get a much bigger range. <laughs> When we're talking about karma or going around and coming around or the law of attraction, what we're doing is when we have an idea or a way that we're behaving, that's the level of energy that we're working at. And if I am vibrating at that level of energy that allows me to be uh, hateful or um, dishonest or uh, killing other people or whatever it is that's that frequency is the frequency that I'm setting myself to. I'm, I'm at that frequency. I'm doing those things. I'm involved in those activities because it's all consciousness. And what happens is things at that level of consciousness get attracted into my life. Mm -hmm. So it might be somebody else showing up with a gun pointed at me <laughs> or whatever, whatever it's going to be. And <clears throat> by the same token, when I change my, my vibration, when I change my energy and I decide I really want to be more focused on love and I raise my vibration to a vibration of love, then what I'm attracting into my life is much more at a level of love. And <clears throat> that's how the karma works with that. So if what I'm doing is being love, then when it goes around and comes around, it's going to come around as love. So, and that probably makes perfect sense to you. And the next question is, what about the loophole? What about if I used to act like a complete asshole and then I changed? Am I still going to get the asshole energy coming back at me? Because that's karma, right? <laughs> that, that's the general idea. So that's, I'm waiting for the, the rest of it. <laughs> um, if we are at a lower level, and I'm using lower and higher, just there are different levels of energy. I and mean, if I'm at the level of energy where I am it, behaving in ways that I would not like people to behave towards me. 
if I'm violating that first law, which is do unto others as you would have done unto you. And I'm trying to do to others before they do unto me. <clears throat> and then before it comes around, I realize that's not what I'm about. And I let go of that. And what happens when people do that is, yeah, on the one hand, you stop treating other people the way that you had been. But other stuff changes too. Like we start engaging in the world in a way that brings more love and more healing and more uplift and more good into our experience. And when that other energy comes around, even if it's the same person, the person who had been wrong, they come back trying to do us wrong. We're not the same person we used to be. And maybe they lose their enthusiasm for it. Maybe we're not defending ourselves. So they realize, yeah, I am right. Maybe we can make amends. You know, and twelve-step programs make you know identifying all the crap that we've done wrong, <laughs> and then making amends to the people we've, who we've wronged is hugely powerful because it closes the loop on that and it takes us out of that that old energetic level and allows us to step into a new one. I am, I am really loving what you said because now I'll get to the loop in a minute. <laughs> but I'm really <laughs> loving what you said in the beginning, and I don't want anybody to miss that part where you talked about um, operating at one level of energy and then deciding, uh, that's my word, deciding to operate at another. I'm not going to be the jerk I was before. I'm a new person. I'm not just new for the day. I am just different in my heart, soul, and everything else, I would never do that again, right? So now you're you're operating at a different energy level, or I guess Emmett Fox would talk about um, a different, um, it just went out of my head that, that quickly. Um, it'll come to me. But um, so you're going to attract a different energy than you did when you were being a jerk, mm -hmm. correct? Absolutely. So then, what happens in the middle, I guess it, you said something about the middle, but I'm seeing like if you have changed and it comes, you meet that person that you, okay, how about this? Um, in college, there was somebody who was very ugly to me if I said hello. Mm-hmm. I didn't do a thing to the person. It just didn't. It was an honest to God. I didn't do anything to him. So I ran into them a couple of times, oh, like 40 years later, and at weddings and stuff like that. And well, I would see the person and I'd go out of my way to, to like, I don't know what happened then, but I'm not saying hello to you now. And they came came to me, right? And spoke. I was scared to speak back. And I finally just said, listen, such and such thing happened. And I just don't know whatever I did to you. I don't want to, I want to make sure I don't ever do that again. And they immediately said to me, that was me in a stupid time. You did nothing. It was just me. I'm mm -hmm. just whatever. And I wasn't angry with the person. I didn't love them now. <laughs> I got to be honest. I wasn't. <laughs> it's was such a waste of time, if nothing else. Yeah, I just wow, thought. Wow, we could have been friends for 40 years plus the time in college, but you were you had a stupid time and you ruined it. So I'm Yeah, sure. and, and the person was so terribly sincere that I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, I spent time, even if it was a moment, thinking about the negativity that they sent out. And here they are, sorry about it. You know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. So a person can change their energy mm -hmm. uh, and their mindset. It's possible. And then that adjusts the way another person reacts to them. Yeah. yeah. And you don't necessarily know where over the course of that 40 years of estrangement that shift in energy happened for them. It might it might have been like a year in, and it took 39 years for it to come around. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what happens when it goes around. Let's, uh, let's take a break and continue this karmic discussion. Learn to put practical prayer to work in your life. The steps are simple to learn and let you begin to get real results to create the life of your dreams immediately. 
Rev. Bill Marcioni's widely acclaimed book, Practical Prayer for Real Results, gives you a clear summary of the new thought principles behind practical prayer and the series of easy-to-understand steps found in the most effective prayers from religions and spiritual practices all over the world and throughout history. Practical prayer is not a replacement for your religion or practice. It's a technique to make the work you do in consciousness even more effective. The book includes 40 prayers on various topics that you can adapt as needed and use as your own. Practical Prayer for Real Results is available in paperback, Kindle, and audiobook on Amazon or at b-the-light.com. That's b-the-light.com. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. And during the break, I remembered the Emmett Fox thing. Okay. It's mental equivalent. Mental, mental equivalent. equivalent. Yep. And it's important to me because I have personally, um, I, I personally understood how much power you have to adjust your mental equivalent. I mean, things that are happening and and I think this applies to karma as well, probably just exactly what you were saying. If you change your mind, your energy, and all of that, that adjusts the level of what you attract to yourself. Mm -hmm. So you could go low or high. It's up to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 it works for whatever it is that we've got in our consciousness. What is in our consciousness is the mental equivalent, and that is what we're going to be attracting into our life experience. And if we call it low and we don't like low, then we probably want to stop doing and thinking and believing low things and having a low consciousness, because otherwise we're going to keep on having low. And if we describe what we prefer as high or whatever the words that you want to use, it's not good or bad. It's just what we're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I want to live in a world where it's okay for me to pick people's pockets. I got to be okay with people picking my pocket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I I want, I want to quote somebody because it was I found it very damaging. I'm I'm dragging it because I'm trying to figure out whether I should say their name. Uh probably not. Here's here's the thing that happens in the traditional church. You reap what you sow. Later than you sow, greater than you sow. Now, forget the positive, because that's just not very much of a discussion in the traditional <laughs> church most of the time. Oh, yeah. So so when you usually, think that sounds this, like the sort of thing that's usually used as a threat. Yeah, well, that statement went out on the air by a hugely popular pastor. And, you know, it, when that happens, it just lives on. But when the person said it, it scared the out of me, right? I was, I was pretty young. And I thought, later than you sow, greater than you sow. Well, later than you sow means like, it's going to happen, but I don't know when. Mm -hmm. Greater, that crap that I put out there is coming back to me, and I don't know when. And it's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you but that's right that's the interpretation of it that you're left with and yeah. um yeah so then when you label you bring the term karma into it you think well this has got to be bad but there's so much more to it and and that's what makes my heart sing that there's more to it and you need to know the more to it um, and even if it's coming back later than you sow, greater than you sow, you just gave us another idea. You can raise your consciousness, your level of consciousness, and that you can diagram it however you want, you know, that you get less of it. <laughs> you might miss it altogether. I don't know. It's yeah. just different. You want a really simple metaphor? Sure. Nice, nice visual. You're standing out there in the middle of the field holding a rock. And you throw the rock high up into the air, as high as you can, and you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> what, what, 
what you have sown <laughs> is going to come back. <laughs> and it will be later than you sow because it's, mm-hmm. it's going through a process. And it will be greater because it was just you throwing a rock in the air. And now it's a rock coming down upon the head or something. You don't have to stand there. The change in consciousness is if you've thrown a rock up in the air, you can move to a different area. You can change yourself. You can do something different. I'm not in the standing here throwing rocks in the air space anymore. I'm inviting something different into experience. And when the rock comes down, it'll do what the rock does, but it won't hit you. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. I I was needing that kind of, uh, of explanation. Or now. Is it possible really that it's good. this simple? Probably. <laughs> well, there's one, there's one principle. I mean, how tough can this be? <laughs> it's only difficult, I would think, if I, and I'm, you know, sort of matching it against other things, uh, laying it juxtaposed to other ideas. It's simple if you want it to be. If you want it to be complicated, if you want it to be bad or negative or punitive, then you, you, it, you know, it works for you another way. But it doesn't have to be. When you think, I think when you think one way, yes, it can be negative. And that's it. And you've got no hope. So you, if it comes back later, then you so, well, you hope you get a little more time before it hits you. Or as negative things happen, and they do, things happen, you wonder if that's it. Is that it? This must be it. I knew it. It was coming on me. I'm telling you, I know this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to encourage you to to just try uh, try on the same concept, but in the framework what you'd call good stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. like love in your life, or prosperity, or vibrant good health. <clears throat> so uh, it will show up in your life. Um, Later than you show and greater than you show. Mm. And so I turn myself to the intention and the awareness and the consciousness of good health and um, having a a, a strong body. Mm -hmm. And by maintaining that consciousness, just naturally, I, you know, will start exercising more and I'll probably change the way that I'm eating and I'll change the way that I'm drinking and might get more sleep or less of something else. And I will get myself into alignment with that consciousness. And then the, the, the muscles, <laughs> the new wardrobe don't show up immediately, but they do show up and they keep on getting better. And when that shows up, it's later than you expect, greater than you so, later than you so, and was it, uh, uh, more than you expect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that, that's a welcome thing, right? Yeah. It's the same principle. It's the same process Mm -hmm. at work. It's just, you know, whether we're going to label it as good or bad. And Mm -hmm. the good news is if I've been doing something that is not helping the people around me and it's not helping me and it's making me vibrate at that low level, you know, if if I have this um, personal style that's very combative and I get into fights with people a lot and I and I win, you know, I'm very good at what I do because I'm willing to do battle and I'm willing to do what it takes and I'm going to win and I'm going to get what's good for me or for my employer or for my family. That's a consciousness that turns into a lifestyle. And as long as I'm doing that, I'm going to keep attracting fights. Mm -hmm. But if I get into the consciousness of, I want to get into win-win situations I want to get into an engagement with somebody where they want something and I want something. And there is a way for us both to get what we want from each other and for each other and through each other. And now there's success for everybody involved. It's the same energy, but it's a very different level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So, and that then tends to, to show up. And what shows up in my life is people cooperating with me and bringing me wonderful opportunities and asking for my help and making them successful. And I can do this to help them. And that makes me better. And everybody's, everybody gets happy. It's the same energy, the same process, just the different consciousness of it. I wish we had those emojis, you know, that's <laughs> <laughs> like hearts and balloons and stuff like that, because that is just, that's such a great thought. Um, and in, until you look at both sides of it, 
I mean, if you look at the negative side, that helps because it just helps. It helps to know that you're not going to be beaten up and there is some hope for you. (laughs) But then when you look at the positive side, it just is, to me, it's so encouraging to try to um, increase and multiply in 10x and 100x that positive uh, mental equivalence or excitement and good stuff Mm -hmm. because it's going to bring more good. Yep. How many times have we talked to people, friends, colleagues, clients, and they have this problem, you know, oh, my boss is such a jerk and I hate, I have worked for the jerk and I always work for jerks. I keep on going to these, I keep on going to work and the boss is just as a rule are jerks. Different conversation is I, and every time I get into a relationship, she turns out, she starts out being so nice and then she turns out to be you know, Satan. You know, <laughs> wearing, <laughs> wearing high heels, <laughs> you know, and they start, they see me so nice. And then there's deception and treachery and they keep cheating on me, et cetera, et cetera. And the only thing that I say in situations like that, first of all, I'm very empathetic, but I say, you know, there's only one thing that all of those relationships have in common. That's you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> yeah. what do you think are the chances that you're going to get into another relationship and it's going to go differently unless you change something about you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and of course, yeah, people love to that, hear that, right? Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, that's sort of like playing hardball. Um, I call it that. But listen. Nothing is going to change unless you change it. That's just a fact. It just works that way no matter what. You know, it's just, I was having, I have um, an espresso habit first thing in the morning. (laughs) I mean, it's, you know, I just get it. I don't drink it all during the day, but first thing. And um, this one, and I go through pots like you wouldn't believe because I refuse to spend two, three hundred dollars on a pot. So I get these cheap ones. And then I get mad when... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I get mad when they stop working and blah, 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 you know, and, and so then I was standing there in the kitchen one day thinking, and I get up at five in the morning, so I'm not ready for any problems, really. I'm not expecting problems and I'm a little ticked off because this stupid pot is giving me the worst espresso ever so many days in a row. Uh, Carol, <laughs> it's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. You keep getting the same stupid cheap pot. It does the same stupid thing. You know, you get a year out of it and then you're pissed. Do something <laughs> different. Do something different. Or <laughs> and, <laughs> buy a second pot. <clears throat> and as soon as it starts giving you trouble, throw it out and put in the backup. Now, that was a, that was suggested to me, right? Because <laughs> I had this brand that I bought for, you know, maybe four or five pots I've had. And I said, I'm not buying that pot anymore. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing it. And now I'm going to spend two weeks trying to make it do the right thing. (laughs) Just stop it, right? So I got this old-fashioned way, you know, thing, pot that I found on Amazon. And this thing gives me joy in the morning. You hear me? (laughs) It does because it's simple it's not going to do the same dumb thing because it's not constructed the same way. Just do something different. A new possibility. It makes, yeah, yeah. There you go. And you um, either intentionally or inadvertently answered the question that you posed at the very beginning of the episode. And yes, this is Bill completely out of character, going back to the original topic uh. <laughs> <laughs> during a podcast episode. Because um, we're talking about mm. stopping karma or changing karma. And you said nothing is going to change unless you change it. And that's the answer. If you always do what you always done, you always get what you always got. We can change it. We can interrupt karma. We can um, arrange to not be standing at ground zero when our bomb lands, (laughs) when our own missile comes in. You're not writing that down, right? (laughs) No, I can get it on the replay, but I'm writing this down. (laughs) We can do that, but we have to do something different. I cannot stand my ground and insist that I've been right all along and I should be able to continue doing what I've been doing, but have the rest of the world change. That's not the way it works. Mm-hmm. And change begins within. There are so many more pithy ways that we can say that. 
uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna not for now. Let's take another break and we'll do a prayer. Here's Reverend Bill letting you know that the Practical Prayer for Real Results class is now available on demand. That's right. You can take it at your own pace anytime you want. All of the information is at bethelight.com. That's b-the-light.com. You know where to find that stuff. The class is five lessons broken down into 18 modules, and you can take them at whatever pace is comfortable for you. As you work through the process, it starts out with the theory, goes into the practice. There are experiential activities and exercises. And at the end of the program, you will wind up with an understanding of how practical prayer works and a practical prayer for yourself that will work to create transformation in your life. And as you know, it works for everything. Take a look at the class online at bethelight.com. There's a sample lesson so you can see how the class is going to work for you and then dive in. The great news is it's on sale now. You can register and save $20 off of the regular price. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. Welcome back to the Practical Prayer Podcast. I'm Carol here with Reverend Dr. Bill Marcioni. Yeah. We've been talking about karma, stopping, interrupting, or redirecting karma. And this has been a fabulous conversation and highlights one of the differences between traditional religions and, uh, and new thought practices. Because in new thought, it's all about consciousness and it's what we call good or what we call bad. That's all the law of attraction is working on that. Uh, as opposed to if there's the devil involved somehow, then that's the one that gets all the attention. Um, <laughs> and it's just your, if you do bad stuff, you attract bad stuff and it kind of leaves out the, uh, the corollary there. And I was thinking while we were talking that, uh, there is a, uh, relatively well-known spiritual tradition that has an intentional process of, uh, of changing consciousness, of stopping karma. And it actually happens around this time of year. It's, uh, it's Yom Kippur. At the Jewish New Year, you spend a week between New Year and Yom Kippur. And the first thing that you do is you, uh, you make atone, you, you atone for whatever it is that you've done to people. You ask people for forgiveness for whatever you've done to them in the last year that's not at that level of consciousness, that's, that's not at that vibration that you really want to be at. Because stuff happens, we're human. And then after that, we get to ask forgiveness of God. So we're opening ourselves up to the infant. But we need to clear up things in our backyard first before we can go and uh, and take the scrub brush to our consciousness. So, an interesting concept. Hmm. Let, let's, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I, well, I was going to probably take us out on a whole nother because I thought about three scriptures that went with that idea, but it just reinforces what you said. So let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the first person to think of it. So let's do a prayer. Let's do a practical prayer on shifting our consciousness and stopping, interrupting, or redirecting karma. Because everything that happens in our lives is a result of what we believe. And if we believe that bad things are going to happen, then we're living in a universe where bad things can happen. If they can, they're going to happen to us. And if we shift our consciousness to understand that all sorts of things are happening, and if it's something that I don't particularly prefer, then I can have it turn into something that's going to be more uplifting or helpful for me more quickly. There are ways that we can shift the way that we are engaging. If we've been doing things that are hurtful to other people, and we come to realize that people are angry with us, <laughs> <laughs> we got a reputation because we keep on doing these things, we can change. And we can change our vibration so that when the angry horde comes around, they're going to be going after the people who we used to work with or hang out with, and not necessarily us, because we're different now, because we're part of that change. So the prayer is, I lift my consciousness and I lift my life, because it is done unto us as we believe. And the reason is because there is one. And we're starting the prayer now. There is one infinite intelligence, one divine presence, one love, one essence. The creative source of everything that exists everywhere. We can call it God. We can call it the infinite. We can call it the universe. We can call it the Big Bang or nature. 
it doesn't matter what we call it. It is that one from which everything flows. It is that one creative force that began with only itself and began unfolding and expressing and revealing all of creation by sharing itself. All that matter, all that energy, all that life, all that intelligence is that one presence expressed in its own way. And those ways include me and each one within the sound of my voice. So I know it is possible to make a shift in consciousness at any time and to invite in a new experience. So that's what I'm claiming for each one listening to this prayer now. I know that each of us is lifting our consciousness to that level that brings more of the good that we are seeking into our awareness, into our activities, into the words that we speak, into the ways that we engage with other people into our relationships, we are that level of love and harmony and givingness and support and encouragement and creativity that we want to see and experience in the world. We become it, we claim it, and then we attract it. And that's the good that's flowing into our lives. And as we open to it more and more and more fully, it flows into our lives more and more and more fully. That is the law of attraction in operation. Good and more good and more good unfolding for and through and as each of us. I'm so grateful for it. I'm grateful for the experiences that we're having that are transformational and better than we had thought. I am grateful for the awareness of this creative process and the willingness of each one within the sound of my voice to engage in the process, the willingness to let go of what is no longer serving to stop doing what we've always done, to embrace a new idea, to have a new activity, to think a new thought and invite in a new experience. So grateful to know that the law is already responding to this invitation for uplift. I'm grateful to know that it's happening now. It is already underway. And so with this deep feeling of thanks, I speak this word and I release it into that creative law that creates everything. And I know it is now creating this. And so I let it be, let it be, and so it is. The Practical Prayer Podcast with Reverend Bill Marcioni and Carol Lawrence is a production of BeTheLight.com. Be-the-light.com. Where you can find more information about practical prayer for real results. Our theme is by Music of Wisdom. You can learn about the spiritual community of New Thought Philadelphia with daily guided meditations, weekly celebrations of spirit, and Reverend Bill's classes in practical spirituality at NewThoughtPhilly.org. This podcast is supported by listeners like you. We're grateful for your tax-deductible donation at newthoughtphilly.org or the link in the episode description.